Good afternoon, lovely friends. How are you all doing today? I do hope you're well. Me? Oh, thank you for asking. I'm fine, thank you. Still a bit tired, but otherwise I'm really fine and all the better for getting to the garden the other day. It was an absolute joy, <laughs> I'm bringing around a bit, absolute joy to get back there and to have most of my fears allayed. Uh, I did, did I mention this in the meal planning? I can't remember, but I did hear, I find out on my way as I was leaving, that there's a couple of plot holders who do have tomato blight. So, um, I'll get the aspirin spray out again. They've only had, I think it's two, two sprays this year, whereas normally by now, they would have had six or seven sprays. Just haven't been around, or if I've been around, it's been chucking with rain, no point. Anyway, it was great to get down there and to do some harvesting, more of that in a second. But today, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a, or a heavy, a shopping haul video, yay! <laughs> um, you've been asking for ages for me to repeat a shopping haul video, and I suppose there is a bit of seasonal element to this because we're in summer now and I think that last one was in early spring and you know it's something folk have asked for for ages and ages and ages and I've always thought that's really weird or why do you want to look at my shopping but I get it I do get it I think I was a bit resistant to doing it at first because I had a look at a few others online and to be honest I didn't like them because you just see this mound even the word haul makes me think of greed, and I'm not greedy, I can't bear greed. But I would just see these like mounds and mounds of food and all that packaging, just masses and masses and masses of packaging, plastic packaging, disposable single-use packaging. Anyway, I do get that folk want to see my shopping, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the way I live, because of my um, kind of drive towards being as self-sufficient as possible. I'm not self-sufficient by any means, but, you know, I do produce a lot of my own food. And that's great. There's a couple of reasons that's great. One, because it's saving me money, but also from this, the ecological thing. When I was out just now, there's something I forgot. I'll tell you about it. I'm going to sit down and make because my knees are killing me from being out. So let's rattle through what I have got, then talk about the thing that I'm going to have to go back out to get. Never mind, but it's great. Can't wait to share this with you. Um, yeah, so, okay, let's crack in. So, first of all, this is what I mean about it being seasonal. I've got a jar of olives. It's quite, quite a lot in there. Mm. So everything I've got today will do me for at least the next two weeks. Some of these things will do me for at least a month, possibly even a bit longer, one of the things. So yeah, yum, yum, yum. The olives were 49 pence. I'm in the UK, so this has come from Lidl. I'll show you the Lidl bits first. 49 pence in the States, that is 70 cents. Then I got myself a big jar of mayo. This was 59 pence or 80 cents. So you'll notice a recurring theme about packaging here. Glass, glass. All of these jars, I reuse them. Either pres preserving, storing. If I can't use them, if I get an excess, I put them on free cycle for folk who do homemade jams, pickles, etc, etc, etc. So none of this goes anywhere near my recycling bin. Recycling, in a way, should be our last option. Never mind refuse. Recycling should be the last option. The first option is to reduce, just reduce the stuff we buy. Whatever we are buying, reuse, 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 reuse wherever possible. And like I said, the very, very last option should be to put it in the recycling. The thing about this mayo as well, to just check, I've checked, it's actually rapeseed oil rather than palm oil. You're probably all aware of the issues around palm oil. If you're not, 
do your research. You can do it yourself, you're a grown up. There are some palm oil producers who produce sustainably and with care and good management. And usually on the ingredients, it will say, or quite often it will say in big letters on the front, because this is something people can sell their product with. It will say something like sustainable palm oil, but do check, do check. Anyway, this one isn't, it's rapeseed. Uh, treat, treat, well, it's not so much that it's a treat, but it's expensive. This is such an expensive item for me. I ran out about two weeks ago, um, but there wasn't the budget for it in the last couple of weeks to buy it, so I've had to wait to this week. It will last for ages. I love this stuff. I use it in a lot of my cooking, just a small amount. <laughs> love it or hate it, good old Marmite. So that was £2.49 which is $3.50. Then, ah, packaging. Long grain brown rice in packaging. I can get it packaging free. I can buy it loose, but they don't have any, they haven't had any for a few days. Not sure when they're gonna get some. I'm sort of kicking myself because I think I probably should have just gone without for a little while longer, just use wild rice, wait for them to restock and then go and buy it loose. Yeah, I'm, I'm kicking myself now. So this week I will have rubbish in the rubbish bin. This rice was, it's a kilo, it was 89 pence, which is $1.20. We're going to get a bit random. Also in the shopping this week was, you're not real to see what it is, it's electric tape, electric insulation tape. This was £1.49, $2.07. Uh, I run out. I've scoured every corner of my tool and decorating type stashes, run out. This is because the cable on my iron, my iron for ironing my linens is fraying so I need to do a repair get some of this stuff on it and get it repaired just eke out the life of my iron for a bit longer I was thinking about it I had the iron I bought the iron when I left home when I was 18 so I've had the iron what 30 33 34 years it's ancient <laughs> but I can keep it going a little bit longer by taping up that flex, it's a bit frayed. Um, so the total of that little lot so far, the, oh, and also, but I popped it in the fridge straight away. I've got two blocks, two blocks of feta. They're 75p each. So the two blocks are £1.50, $2.10. And basically a block like that, let me see the thickness, half a block of that will do me for a week. So one week, two weeks, the other block, three weeks, four weeks. The reason I bought two blocks at once, the use by date is fine on them, is this branch of Lidl that I've gone to, oh, it's right at the bottom of the hill that I live on, right at the bottom. Uh, it's a bit of a schlep there. It's more of a schlep back because it's all uphill. So I don't go there very often. I avoid it if I can. Um, but when I am there, I make sure to, you know, for instance, you know, the olives. I can get similarly priced olives nearer to home. In, in fact, the Turkish, I was gonna say restaurant, what's it called? Turkish supermarket near me. I can get them there as well. In fact, I could probably get an even bigger bottle. It'd be even more economical, except I'd, eat the whole lot in one go, I love my olives. Um, but yeah, because I knew I wanted to get a bit of feta, I thought, yeah, let's go down to Lidl, and then I can stock up on the olives, the mayo, the marmite I got down there. I don't know how much that costs in, say, Tesco's or Sainsbury's, the kind of, you know, the more middle-priced supermarkets in the UK, I'm not sure. So, right. I need to sit down. Uh, what total will we be up to? £7.45, including the feta. That's $10.37.
This is for at least two weeks, if not more, of eating. So you could say that actually for a week it's more like £3.50, $5, even less. How is it even possible? Let's sit in a chat. And I'll tell you about the thing that I forgot to get, which I'm going at, back out in a minute to get. Oh, that's better. I definitely needed to sit down. Right, so, yeah, doesn't look like a lot. And, and here I am saying this is going to keep me going for, you know, up to a month. The Marmite will, will go for longer than a month. Probably the mayonnaise will, oh, I don't know. I'll try and make this lot last at least one month. Which, yeah, it seems bonkers, doesn't it? And you see a little collection like that. Now, I am, I am really kicking myself about the rice and the packaging. But I think one thing's really, really clear from my shopping, <coughs> my shopping habits, when you, when you see my haul, uh, I'm always trying to shop mindfully, you know, with things like the environment in mind, you know, all those kind of things. And this is kind of like me trying to head off the trolls. If I was to buy the, the rice loose, it's actually, stupidly, it's about two and a half times more expensive. So that would have cost two pounds instead of 89p. So I, had, I didn't work out the dollars for that. What's two pounds? It's gonna be about three-ish dollars. And you might say, or the trolls might say, well, that's all right for you spoiled little middle class people with your private income and your, you know, your fancy pensions and what have you. <laughs> Remember, I don't have any of that. My income is actually less than the, the bottom line benefits are in this country. I think you call it government assistance in the States, don't you? So I actually live on less than someone who lives on benefits. And that is not me saying, poor me, poor me, far from it. Uh, you all know me by now. I'm very happy with my life. The reason I can do it, and I keep coming back to it over and over again for any of you who are hoping to go the frugal route, uh, for whatever reason, you know, we've talked about this before, whether you want to pay down some of your mortgage, if you've got horrible credit card debts and you want to get rid of those, whatever it is, if you're saving for maybe to buy your first flat, um, whatever it is, if you're heading into this frugal life, one of the best things you can do for yourself to save money is to grow your own veggies. I put it onto the end of the video the other day, didn't I? The, the, I'd worked out, if I had bought my vegetables in 2019, it would have cost me £2,000, which equates to is that £40 a week. I obviously eat a lot of vegetables because that's all I eat, I'm vegetarian. So you could say that if I didn't have a garden, I'd be spending my 40 quid on my veg and my five to 10 pounds on other stuff. What would that be? What's 50 quid in dollars? I'm trying to look for a nearest amount. I don't know what that's gonna be. 35, about 70, about 70 US dollars. So the 40 pounds for the, the veggies I grew, I grew 40, 40 pounds a week's worth. What's that gonna be in dollars? It's very confusing, about 60, 65 dollars. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, I realize how lucky I am to have an allotment garden to grow my veg in. You've seen, it takes hard work. There's no two ways about it. Um, you know, the, the people who scorn veg grain will say, oh yeah, but you haven't factored in the cost of your labour, you know, to, to grow your veggies. Well, look, you know, how much time do people spend going shopping? You know, you don't factor that in, do you? In probably in a car, using up petrol and the price of actually owning the car in the first place. So yes, there is my labour time involved. But instead of thinking of it as a labour cost for the food, think of it as free because that's my gymnasium. I don't need a gym membership. That's my social club. It's my spiritual soul place. It's all those things. So yeah, the veggies barely cost me anything. 
And this year, without having bought compost for the garden, I bought compost for seed starts. The vast majority of my seeds, I've saved my own. It really, really is about the equivalent of about two pounds a week, including the rental for me to grow all of that food. So you could say my 40 pounds a week of veggies is actually 38 because you've got knock off the two quid. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd kind of underline that. The fridge at the moment is absolutely chock full of fresh veggies I collected from the garden the other day. There's a lot, a lot more to come. We're just now beginning to get into that time of year when I can be picking every couple of days and of those pickings, some I will eat fresh, some I will store. I'm always, always a little bit of it aside to store. So there will be the fresh green beans or the yellow beans in, uh, in the case of the rocking core. A ton more new potatoes. The new potatoes will keep me going right through till... Where are we? August, September. They'll keep me going to the end of October by which time I'll dig out the main crop potatoes and they'll see me through winter. So yeah, the fact that I've got a garden is why I can do this. And it's also why I can be, I can be fussy in how I shop. I can be that kind of slightly more ethical consumer. I can think, no, I don't want to buy things in plastic packaging. I'll buy them in a paper bag, even if it costs twice as more. And I realise for a lot of people that's simply not an option because their pound has to go a lot further because they don't have a vegetable garden. They don't have space for one, they don't have allotment, they've got no choice. So that's what I can do, I'm happy to do it. Um, you know, if you can as well, great. Now, the thing that I forgot, <laughs> it's empty, laundry liquid. So, this bottle, to buy it new, uh, it's got the old price label on it still, cost £5.69, which is, I did make a note of this before I started filming, that's $7.90. However, to get it refilled, so I take my old bottle back. I'd gone into the shop to look to see if they had rice, and they didn't, and when I was there I realised I didn't have my bottle, so I'd have to come home and get my empty bottle. <laughs> To refill it will be £4.25, in dollars that's $5.90. So already this week I've spent £7.45, I've only got £2.55 of my £10 a week budget left. How am I going to afford laundry liquid? I don't need to. I've got credit notes. The shop where I'm going to get this refilled have started a sort of barter trading scheme. Now at the allotment, it's part of our rules, I am not allowed to sell my produce. We're not allowed to make money from the garden. Fine. I've been doing a bit of foraging. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give it away to give other people ideas and they will start flooding down here and go into my foraging patches and nick my idea and nick my bit of trade but yeah I've been doing some foraging and so far they're on the pin 150 is three and three food so far I've got six pounds fifty worth of credit so that's easy enough to refill my laundry liquid and get some rice oh, I should have waited that's gonna bog me now never mind I can either keep hold of that credit or, for instance, I get my, the washing up liquid I use for doing my dishes, I can get that refilled and I'd still have a little bit of credit left over. Maybe a bar of chocolate. So I'm chuffed, I'm chuffed, chuffed, chuffed about that. So that's me looking after myself probably for four weeks. This will be free. I've spent a little bit over seven quid and that also includes repairs for my iron. That's it for a month, I reckon. If I have to spend something else during the rest of this, because I can't speak the rest of this month because we are just at, right at the beginning of August. What's the date? 4th of August. Because we are right at the beginning of the month. If I get anything else this month, I'll let you know. But I think that might be it. £7.45p for my shopping for the month. 
or $10.37. I've immediately thought of something I do need to buy soon. In about a week's time, I need to buy some loo paper. It's, I can't remember now, it's about five pounds a packet, which for dollars is gonna be about seven dollars. That's okay, because actually, after this, I've still got three weeks of shopping allowance. So that's 10 quid a week, so that's 30 quid. Today's two pound 55 change. What I don't do, I sort of carry it forward. <clears throat> what I've been doing recently though is trying not to do the full 10 because I'm really, really, really mindful of my pennies at the moment, every single penny, because of other bills coming in. So I won't sort of say, oh, I've got 30 quid this month. I've only spent five of it. I'll blow the rest on some wine or beers or whatever. I won't be blowing it. I'll be putting it into the savings account. So there we go. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I know I've got a bit wordy at the end. It wouldn't be a Vivi video if it didn't get wordy though, would it? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's time for me to um, go and repair my eye. No, first of all, it's time for me to go and get my laundry liquid refill. I will see you all again really soon, I hope. I think probably it's gonna be in the garden. But I'm also going to do another little video soon about, because it's so pertinent for me at the moment, and I hope it will be pertinent for some of you, it's just about sort of how to get organised when you're in the midst of chaos, because I have been, and you know, I've been a bit stressy because of being a bit poorly and, and running hither and thither and having so many things to do. So I thought I'd go through how I do my organisation, how I get myself organised and hopefully there'll be some really useful sort of hints and tips in that for you to copy, make your own, whatever. Because it's always coming back to that thing, isn't it, that when you're leading the frugal life, you know, we're not spending much money, great, but the one thing we are spending a lot of is time. We use up a lot of time to do the things which once upon a time we would have thrown money at and spent less time doing. So because time becomes so much more short and more precious, we have to get more organised than ever before. So I'll bring you that soon too, uh, but yeah, maybe the garden before then. Whatever it is, I'll see you all really soon, I hope. Until then, please look after yourselves and each other. Cheerio.